We followed them through buying their first RV and even joined them on their first overnight camping trip. This week, we catch up with Randy and Pat Kolb to find out about their experiences, what they've learned, and how they enjoyed their first year of RVing. Then, Spur into Extreme RVing, our next story will get your adrenaline going as we head to Arizona and visit the Overland Expo. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Regular viewers may remember the segments that we've done on Pat and Randy Kolb. The Kolbs are the first time RVers we tagged along behind as they took delivery of their new Lance trailer and went through the whole new owner orientation process, which can be fairly involved. Next, they launched into their first RV camping weekend, where they had a great time along with their daughter Jean, and they learned a lot about RVing. <laughs> After some time in an RV and a few nights in camp, even if you have a very well-equipped unit, you start to notice there's a few things you could add to it that might enhance your camping experience. Well, that's true with the Kolbs as well. A few months later, we visited the Kolbs again to see some additions they made to their trailer. These included a bicycle rack up front, a leveling aid on the hitch, and a new style of weight distributing hitch. The Kolbs have been having a really great time with their Lance. However, the one fly in their RV ointment has been the water heater. Despite numerous trips to service centers throughout the West and a complete replacement of the brand new heater early on, it still doesn't work right. Well, we have just finished an eight week trip doing the North, the Southwest National Parks and we loved it. We had a great time, the trailer, everything went really well. Um, perfect, but one issue if I had to pick something out that I wasn't really thrilled with was how well our water heater worked for us. Uh, it just was pretty finicky and you know and you're say washing your face at night getting ready for bed and it's nice and warm then it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and all of a sudden you have to turn it down and then it's really cold it just wasn't what we wanted it to be right um, i'd say you had to dial in the right temperature and that was both the hot and the cold and the amount of flow you were getting and if you didn't hit it just right you could go from really hot to really cold pretty quickly um, and the problem with that is eventually you'd get it adjusted and you dial it in, but you'd be using water to do that. We have a 26 gallon tank of water and we can't afford when, when we're off the grid uh, to be wasting any water to get the right temperature. So we're really excited about this Truma unit. Um, we've read a lot of reviews from people who have been testing it and they all love it. Uh, consistent hot water, you don't have to mess with it to get the right temperature. We're pretty excited about this install. The Kolbs decided to use the new Truma AquaGo instant water heater. The AquaGo has been making a really big splash in the RV industry, so to speak, and it should do a nice job of solving their hot water problem. Well, we followed along an installation at the Garrity RV Center in Junction City, Oregon, and the installation went a lot easier than we thought. Here's how it went. The AquaGo installation starts with draining the RV's fresh water system, including the old water heater. Garrity technician Scott Tigg inspects the water, propane, and electric hookups to the old heater. These fittings are disconnected to facilitate removal of the old heater and will be reused for the new one. Actually, this could have been a lot worse in there for space. Yeah, it could have been. Next, the screws holding the old trim in place are removed and the trim is pried loose from the old butyl caulk tape. Yeah. yeah, what I'm doing is just using a putty knife to get behind the, the butyl tape and uh, just kind of bending the... A couple more screws and the entire old heater comes free. Get all the screws out, it comes out nice and nice and easy and a nice little 
compact box. The AquaGo was designed to fit in the same space occupied by an existing RV water heater, which simplifies installation. Randy took this opportunity as a good time to clean up the space prior to installing the AquaGo. Truma technician Mark Howlett detailed some of the service connection options that make installation more flexible. We have an optional kit that you can run it out the back of the unit and that allows you to, depending on the installation inside the trailer, you can adapt it to, to whatever you need. So you could also take it off and, and run it out the back here and connect it there as well. Um, as far as the, the water fittings, um, they're half inch MPT, so it should be exactly the same. Um, and then we just need to connect to the 12 volt. Scott cleans the old putty tape remains as the final pre-install step. Then fresh butyl tape is added to ensure a water-resistant seal is in place. The new AquaGo simply slides into the previous heater's position and is screwed in place. Propane line is attached, tested for leaks, and the supplied rubber grommet is clamped in place. Leak testing the propane line is especially important. The water and electric lines are reinstalled and tested on the new heater. In the hot water line to the top, um, we turned the pump on, no water leaks at all. And then what I did with the 12 volt system, I, I uh, installed a, a 5 amp inline fuse within between the hot lines of the trailer to the uh, back of the water heater. I'm just going to lay those right in there. Next comes bleeding the air bubbles from the water lines. We'll be right back to continue the AquaGo installation right after these messages. Simply put, Thetford's AquaChem has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaChem, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaChem, another great product from Thetford. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. We'll continue our Truma AquaGo instant hot water heater installation with testing and training. The AquaGo operates very differently than a conventional RV water heater, so a full orientation is in order. So if the unit senses a temperature below 41 degrees Fahrenheit, it'll actually turn itself on. There's a small pump in the back here. It'll actually circulate warm water through the unit to protect the unit from freezing. In the comfort mode, what it'll actually do is it'll maintain the temperature at 102 degrees Fahrenheit. That will actually give you a, a bit of faster response for your hot water when you turn the hot water on. Okay. okay. So for now, we're going to flip it to Eco. Eco will preserve more of your, your propane. Um, in, a we in weather like today, um, it will not come on unless there's a demand for water. Okay. When we turn it on, there's a few seconds, and then a green light will come on. The green light means that the, the unit is now active. Um, down below here, we have a, a red light, which will be a blink code. In the manual, it'll give you some, some instructions if you're troubleshooting, that if you have a blink, you can count the blinks, and it'll tell you what's wrong with okay. the unit. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go inside, we'll run the water, and just check to make sure that we do actually have hot water. The unit will fire up, and then we can, uh, we can see what we have. Yeah, great. Okay? Great. Hot water. Wow, lots of hot water. <laughs> this is great. Wow, we got hot water out here too. Gotta start taking outside showers. 
Um, when you go to hook up on your city water side, we recommend that you have a pressure reducer. This particular unit um, will reset or minimize the pressure down to 45 PSI. The unit is actually designed for a maximum of 65 PSI. Some of your city water connections can reach up to 100 PSI. So we recommend to protect the, the unit and, and the other product inside your vehicle with a pressure reducer. Winterizing is important for many RVers and the AquaGo makes the water heater part of the process painless. Truma has come up with this innovative easy drain lever. Um, you're not experienced with the old water heaters, but you used to have to pull out this plug and water would drain down inside the vehicle and all over the side. You get water stains and things like that. Um, with this easy drain lever, the water actually will move outside um, and away from the vehicle. Um, first thing we need to do is we shut the unit off, so we'll switch it off. Green light is off. Now we're going to go inside. We'll, um, we're going to shut the pump off and then we're going to depressurize the system because this is under pressure, this tank, and we don't want water spraying all over the place. So we've depressurized the system, we've shut the pump off now, so this is not under pressure. So part of the, the maintenance um, that we recommend is, is to check, there's a filter in here as well, a stainless steel filter, we want to check that. So you just take that, use your thumb to lift up and then pull down on that lever, and then just gently pull it down. Now the water will drain out. There's less than a quart of water, it's about 1.3 liters of water inside there. And you can actually pull that filter out as well. Just grab right here and we'll pull that out. It'll help the water drain a little bit faster. So, so this is a stainless steel filter, and this filter is actually helping to protect the moving parts inside the unit. So because there's a, a flow sensor in there, we want to protect that. What we recommend annually is that you take this out, check it, check the O-rings, and then and then rinse this off just in case there's any particulate. The actual water actually flows in here and up into the system. Great. We do not recommend that uh, when you're winterizing your unit that you blow through the water lines. There is a flow meter inside the AquaGo which is sensing the water flow. For the same reason that we want to control the pressure and minimize the amount of pressure, we want to also not uh, damage the, the system. So we would recommend either isolating the, the unit with a bypass system or you can fill it with your normal glycol antifreeze system to winterize the unit. Do you want to put that back in? Normally this would be drained by now. Okay, and then just make sure that's in the right position, then just close it up. Give it a pop with your yeah, now it's clicked, it's in position, it's done. Now if you're winterizing, the maintenance is done for the year. If you're winterizing it, all the water's out of the system. You want to protect the copper in here. If it does freeze, they'll expand and they'll okay. crack. Okay? Um, system is ready now for for putting it away into storage, or if you've done your maintenance, now we just reverse that process of bringing it back up. We want to open up the tops, vent the, the air out of the lines again, mm -hmm. bring everything back up to pressure, and then you can turn the system back on. Okay. Okay. The final step is installing the trim ring and access cover. And then we just, so you can see here. Yeah, those are helps a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, the latch is, um, very simple. Um, it, the door is actually designed um, to open in this position so that you can actually access the on off switch here. And then if you need to do any maintenance or do any draining, move it forward, pull it out, and then drop it away from, from the vehicle. It'll okay. hang there with the straps and then it's, it's easy to work on from this position if you need to open the, the lever or anything okay. like that. Put it back in, just lift it up, make sure the ties are in, and drop it into the hole, in, Latch, John, ready to go. Following their next trip, we were pleased to hear the Kolb's AquaGo report. Yeah, we just got back from four days at a country music festival uh, on the Southern Oregon coast, had a great time, and are happy to report that really for the first time in the year and a half that we've been uh, trailering, that we had just a wonderful hot water situation. It was just like you would hope it would be. Yeah, it was super. Um, I know I've said, many times in the past to Rand, I said, it's just so hard to wash your face quickly without the water getting really hot, then getting really cold. And at the coast, we were in a situation where we weren't on city water and we didn't waste a lot of time with trying to get the water to the right temp. It came on, it stayed where you wanted it to stay. We showered, we cooked, we washed dishes, everything, and it was just perfect. It worked just like a yeah. home water heater system. Yeah.
Yeah. It was great. We were so pleased. <laughs> yeah, really happy with the AquaGo. Well, it looks like the Kolb's water heater hassles are all over with. We enjoy telling our viewers about products that work, and in this case, the story had a happy ending for all concerned. To learn more about the Truma AquaGo water heater, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Coming up, we'll head to Flagstaff, Arizona and look at some wild off-the-road RVs and gear at the Overland Expo. Is it now the perfect time to turn your old pop-up tent trailer from looking like this to looking like this? Treat yourself and your family to a bug-free camping season with a new tent canvas from Canvas Replacements. To learn more or to order a new canvas, visit canvasreplacements.com or call 800-232-2079. At Icon Direct, we make more RV aftermarket products than we have time to list here, like skylights, fender skirts, towing products, and, well, you get the picture. So, the best way to see all our products and most likely find just what you're looking for is to visit our website at icondirect.com or call our friendly customer service department at 888-362-4266. Greetings. We're at the Overland Expo just south of Flagstaff, Arizona. Now, there's a lot of special interest areas related to RVing, a lot of different ways to enjoy your recreational time. Overlanding is pretty much long-term adventure travel uh, in self-contained vehicles. And that sort of describes what RVs do, but in a less serious way. However, here at the Expo, there's all kinds of interesting vehicles and products to see that are designed specifically for this type of rugged, heavy-duty off-pavement use and long-term travel. So let's take a look around and we'll show you some of the interesting sights here. Overland Expo is an annual event here in Northern Arizona. It's a do-it-yourself adventure travel event. We get about 5,000 people from all over the world, about 20 countries. Uh, we offer 150 different exhibitors selling everything from Land Rovers, Toyotas, four-wheel drives, adventure motorcycles, all the way up to your larger four-wheel drive expedition vehicles such as the XP Camper, the Global Expedition Vehicles. So the Explorer Off-Road Camper by Jurgens is a ground-up built safari-based off-road camper for off-road use. Features onboard power, water heater, 24-inch pop top to allow a 6-foot-5 individual space, queen-size bed in the back, queen-size bed in the front, and a full slide-out kitchen as well. Features a two-burner gas stove, onboard 80-quart off-road specific fridge freezer for extreme conditions, and onboard water with mixer as well, drying rack and prep surface area. The event isn't all hardcore vehicles. Attendees can also find some very useful equipment on display. Um, and the reason why we introduced the Big Wig Sway Bar was because um, you get a lot of extra roll um, in uh, these large campers. Um, and anything that's top heavy, you get a lot of roll. So um, what comes standard on a um, a tow package uh, for the Super Duties is a bar about this diameter, so really light. Um, and then this is what we upgrade it to. The Big Wig Bar is this bigger inch and 5 sixteenths uh, diameter, where normally we'll have about an inch and a fourth diameter on um, most of the truck sway bars that we do. Um, and what the inch and 5 sixteenths does is it just adds a lot more roll stiffness to the vehicle. Um, and makes it so that I'm even willing to drive it. This year's expo included a wedding of two adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> the ring was delivered by a radio control model Land Rover Winch. Now that's hardcore romantic. The after-hours parties, where you meet new friends and run into old ones, are a big part of the fun at the Expo. For example, our regular viewers may remember Gary and Monica Westcott of the Turtle Expedition. It's always fun to sip a cold one with them and be brought up to date on their adventures. 
After the break, we'll be back and pay a visit to more familiar faces and products we saw at the Overland Expo. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. At Norco, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Welcome back to the show and our continued visit to the Overland Expo near Flagstaff, Arizona. In addition to the specialized expedition vehicles at the show, we also ran into some familiar products and faces. The centerpiece of the sportsmobile display was an interesting new type of RV. Okay, this is our new product that we're introducing here at the uh, show, and it's actually a Mitsubishi Fuso Canter four-wheel drive. Uh, we took a challenge on to build a uh, really unique global expedition vehicle that it will actually fit in a container for shipping, yet it has full stand-up headroom. So it's a low-profile vehicle that actually expands out to full living quarters. It actually has 66 uh, or 63 gallons of fuel, diesel fuel. It has about a 900 mile cruising range, 80 gallons of fresh water, and it's completely containerable, and yet the living situation, there's no canvas on it, it's all hard-sided walls. And the four-wheel drive is actually a factory four-wheel drive from Mitsubishi. So we've had so many requests for a, self a real self-contained camper. And what that means is that we have a built-in cassette toilet in the camper, as well as a real live indoor shower. Now we've built campers with cassette toilets, porta potties and so on with outside showers, but this is a really dedicated camper with the inside shower, the cassette toilet. We build this camper, uh, this interior, not only for the fleet for a Tacoma or a Nissan Frontier, but we also build it for short bed and long bed full size trucks as well. And that would be our Hawk model and our Granby model for the full size trucks. We are displaying our new Liberty Hardwall camper. It's seven feet in the floor length and is designed to go on all of the short bed trucks that are now available out there, whether they be six foot six, six foot ten, or even the smaller five foot seven, five foot six boxes. The camper has a full queen bed running north south. It does have the insulated argon gas filled windows and is of course got the toilet, shower, fridge, furnace, etc. Um, a lot of people like this size because it is a two-person rig and they can still tow behind their truck. We're with John from Auspit and John's got a really nifty new product for us to look at. There's lots of gadgets you can get for use by your campfire and this may be the ultimate. So what is this thing, John? It's fire fishing. Fire fishing. Yeah, it's just a great new way to have some fun around the campfire. Cook up your marshmallows, cook up your hot dogs, cook up your bacon wrap scallops, maybe some bacon wrap jalapeno poppers. Okay, and how does it work? What, what exactly uh, looks like a fishing pole with a little gadget on the end? Yeah, a little jig on the end, stainless steel tip on here. You just get down on by the fire and uh, starts to get done on one side, and you just give it a little jig and you flip it over. Ah. So you can get it cooked nice and even on both sides. Real easy, it's fun. Nice little campfire activity. Looks good. It must be something, one of those things that everybody needs for their campfire. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a great gift. You know, everybody had just lines of, of grandparents here today buying them for their grandkids and just having fun with them. Okay. But you can do two hot dogs or up to four marshmallows at a time. Sounds good. Well, thank you. All right. Thanks enjoy for stopping the by. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by. The average RVer may not be planning a year-long trip across Africa or the frozen waste of Siberia, but the people, hardware, and ideas at the Expo can still inspire us. For more information about the Overland Expo, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. 
We hope you enjoyed this week's program. And for additional information on anything you've seen on the show, along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com.